Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Howard Kaufman. Today is Wednesday, March 28th, 2018. This is the Budget Committee of the National Board of Education, and we are meeting in the National High School North boardroom. Uh, before we begin our deliberations tonight, I would like to uh, acknowledge and welcome our newest board member, Mrs. Susan Porter. Welcome to the board. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be here. Okay, you'll, you. it's a rite of passage. It's <laughs> the only way to explain it. I would like to call the meeting to order and ask Mr. Guarino to call the roll. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Mosher? I'm here. Mrs. Oden? Here. Mr. Kaufman? Here. Ms. Raymond? Here. Ms. Timmons? Here. Ms. Hohensey? Here. Ms. Van Twyver? Here. Mr. Garino is here. Ms. Porter? Here. Um, other attendees, Dr. Mosley? Here. Is here. Uh, Ms. Ms. Fitzpatrick? Dr. McKinney? And Mr. Donovan? Thank you. So we're finally assembled, all nine of us. So thank you. Okay. So let me start off with some brief comments. I, I need to cover a couple of things. Our last meeting ended rather abruptly and without proper closure. I would like to remind the board that the budget de deliberation process is different from our other meetings. Please remember we are in a continuing discussion until we are finally resolved and that process typically occurs over several weeks. We only started this process last week and we have to finish it this week, and I'll explain more about this in a minute. Please keep in mind that we need to do a bit of parliamentary protocol before we can adjourn our meetings. Most importantly, the board needs to table the budget for the next meeting. That didn't happen at our last meeting. Also, with the unexpected motion to adjourn, the chair was unable to review the action items of the meeting and determine if there were additional questions for the administration. So I'm asking the board to keep this in mind before offering, offering any motions, Start, caught myself sounding like a New Yorker there for a second, before offering any motion to adjourn without proper consideration of the parliamentary requirements and the need to conduct a proper close of the meeting. Board members, it turns out that the schedule that we were operating under was incorrect. Contrary to the schedule published by the administration, we have only tonight and the remainder of this week to complete our work. It turns out that our budget proposal is scheduled for Monday night review by the Alderman. I did not know this. I only learned about it today. I'll, no. no. Um, please do not interrupt. Okay. I'll wait. I know that we had at least, an, I thought we had at least another week of deliberations. That's why I have scheduled budget review meetings for the next two days. In this way, we can at least have properly noticed meetings that we can cancel if we don't need them. Uh, thanks to Mrs. Kleiner, uh, who works for the mayor, for help in figuring this out. Budget committee chair to budget committee chair is how she said it to me. Just as a reference point, last year we had 25 different budget adjustment motions. To ensure that our time is well spent and structured, and yet allows for full debate, I offer the following ground rules for the remainder of our budget de de deliberations. Forgive me. All member proposals will be heard. All members will be heard on each question. Any attempt to prematurely bring closure to any particular discussion will be ruled out of order by the chair. We want everybody to participate. Any attempt to prematurely bring closure to this budget process without all member requests being heard will be ruled out of order by the chair. Any issue needing further information will be tabled. Administrators are asked to limit their participation by only answering questions from board members. Why? Because the administration has already presented the budget to us twice. There is no set time limit for tonight's meeting, but every effort will be made to get us out of here at a reasonable time and at a logical point of adjournment. Any member interrupting another member holding the floor will lose the opportunity to speak on that subject. Any member that gets off topic 
will be gently reminded by the chair to return to the topic under discussion. All votes will be roll call and follow the appropriate parliamentary rules for the situation. As a matter of housekeeping, at least two members have indicated that they cannot attend tomorrow night's meeting. I would like to ask our members if we were to change the starting time to seven o'clock, would that enable more attendance? So I'd like to, I know Mr. Guarino said you could not attend if we moved it to seven o'clock, would that change your plans? And no, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Raymond? No, I have a standing commitment for okay. my children at 6.30. Okay, thank you. Any other members have a problem with 6.30? That would enable, would, we want participation. So if there's anyone who would like us to, yes, Ms. Holmes. I, I would benefit from a seven o'clock start. I've got a tight schedule tomorrow, but I'm happy to come. I just might not be here promptly at 6.30. Okay, is that a problem for other members if we begin tomorrow's meeting at seven? Ms. Van Twyver, do you have a problem with that? Ms. Timmons, is that a problem for you? Seven o'clock tomorrow? Yes, it would be a problem with me, but I like to make I'm, a motion. I'm no, please stick to my question. Anyone else care to weigh in on seven o'clock tomorrow? Excuse me, Ms. Porter. This is the first I've heard that there's a meeting tomorrow. So what I had just tried to explain, so what happened was, we f I found out this afternoon that the aldermen are expecting our final budget for their review so they can review it on Monday. The original schedule put forth by the administration had us uh, scheduled for this week and next week. We no longer have a meeting for next week because I would like to try and get it done this week and you know, just recognition to the alderman's schedule. So that's why I scheduled, uh, note, asked to schedule a meeting for Thursday night and Friday night. Two more nights. It, if necessary. Can we finish tonight? Totally possible. Okay. These two meetings, uh, Thursday and or Friday, are just in case we need them. If we don't need them, they'll be canceled. Ms. Raymond. I'd just like to call your attention to an email that Kim Kleiner um, sent out this afternoon, um, letting us know that they've revised the budget schedule by the aldermen. Um, instead of us going on Monday, it looks like IT will be going Monday, and they have scheduled us for May 10th. Okay, well, oh, I didn't know that at all. That's, that, I'm, I'm just reading. I've been offline. I'll tell you that earlier. Well, that's okay. We got to it, right? Oh, so this is a process. The, the email says, good afternoon. Attached, please find a revised budget review schedule, which reflects the following. IT will be presented next Monday, presenting, excuse me, next Monday, April 2nd, and the school district will present on the evening of May 10th. Thanks. What time is that? Uh, uh, no, I'm sorry. The the email went to us. I got it at 6:04 p.m. Oh, um, but it looks like my card. It looks like it was originally sent from Susan Lovering, as I'm following the path at like 4:14. So I don't know if the delay was on my end or if the delay was on their end. Well, I guess this is good news, but is it good news or is it bad news? I don't know. Because I just wanted to make sure no, you I had appreciate the updated information that I got right before you. I came so here. So I did not know that. So the, uh, the, uh, the date from the aldermen when they will review the school budget is now set for Monday, May 10th. Yeah, now, did, that, email. did the email from Ms. Kleiner indicate when they wanted our budget submitted to the aldermen? Because I know happen. there's lead times attached to those things. No, I, I read... No, I, I read you word for word what it said. Okay, so we still need to find the lead time. The good news is that we have all of, well, I don't think we have all of April, but I guess um, we certainly have more time. So to that extent, well, here's a dilemma because uh, Mrs. Oden um, sent an email earlier today. We originally had a meeting scheduled for tonight and then the next Wednesday. And when I was under the impression we had a deadline to try and get our work done this week, I put, sent out my memo to do that. Mrs. Odin sent out an email saying that she wanted to use what was now, we thought, a free Wednesday night, is I think what the logic was on that. I, I think, is that fair, Mrs. Odin? I don't, yeah. So if we don't continue this week, then we have to preempt, then I would ask that the budget committee reclaim, if that's a, a way to put it, that schedule that we originally had. Mrs. Odin. 
Are you speaking about the works work yes. session? For, yes. That hadn't been confirmed. I was waiting to hear from people. You're the only one that had oh. responded. So people, that wasn't a definite. Okay. Okay. So is it okay that we continue to meet next week if we need it Wednesday yeah, as scheduled? Absolutely. So, Mrs. Hohens? You said May 10th. I think you mean April 10th that they're going to take the it email, up. Uh, was the email. It, I'm, I'm sorry, I read the email word for word. I was surprised as well. But it's May 10th, so that gives us a whole month and not a week. So, yes, the, the email says, Attached, please find a revised budget review schedule which reflects the following. IT will be presenting next Monday, April 2nd, and the school district will present on the evening of May 10th. Thanks. Wow. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. I, I cannot open the attachment right now, but that's, okay. I can read the body of it. Okay, well, that's good. Dr. Mosley? I concur with uh, Ms. Raymond. Okay, so should we cancel the meetings for Thursday and Friday of this week, knowing that we'll just continue with our original schedule now that we have extra time? Is that okay with everybody? Ms. Timmons? I'd like to make a motion. I'm sorry. Where I'm not finished with my comments. You, oh, you, you, you spent 15 minutes on your comments. And let me refer you to something I just said. I just, I heard what you just said. Please, Please do don't interrupt. Me. Please the do not interrupt me. You just said what I, you just did. Please go on. I'd like to make a motion. You're wasting time. I'm going to rule you out of order, Ms. Timmons. I'm trying to acknowledge everybody's input into a scheduling issue that was brought on us surprisingly. And all I'm trying to do here is make sure that everybody has input and has a voice. And thankfully, Ms. Raymond had the email. I had tied up all late afternoon. I didn't see anything since early this afternoon when I sent out the request for those two meetings. So, um, so my issue here was a matter of housekeeping. I was trying to find out about the change of time. So I will just declare, based on input, the uh, scheduled meetings for this week, Thursday and Friday. I will uh, formally cancel them. I'll let everybody know via an email. And we will continue, if we need, a meeting next Wednesday at 6.30 here as originally scheduled. Now, the last thing I would like to do here is uh, in just a moment, I'll be asking Dr. Mosley and or Mr. Donovan to provide the answers to the questions from our last meeting. Once those are addressed, I will open the floor for additional board member questions, and then we will begin uh, item-specific discussions. If there is no objection, Dr. Mosley, Mr. Donovan, the floor is yours. Good evening, everyone. A um, couple things. If uh, there's, you know, certainly the, the budget is the budget. Uh, the, the, the mayor has, you know, made the recommendation at 2.5. Um, you know, there are some items here that we can certainly discuss. Um, the, there are some things that I just think that uh, I wasn't here the last budget meeting. Um, some of the questions that excuse more than me, asked. Dr. Mosley, but could you please try excuse to, me? What I the, asked in my opening remarks was that please address the questions that the board had sent you. We are we have a very short window. We have I'm still operating that we can finish this tonight. Quite frankly, I think we can do that, and I would ask that we move forward and continue as proposed which has been accepted. So would you please, please address the questions? Um, uh, you've had time to speak to the budget I'm, several I'm times. I'm trying to answer them, but you're not, you're, you're not letting me. Please so there are a couple board members that have their hands up. I'll defer to them and then I'll answer the question. Ms. Timmons? No. No, no. no you cannot determine. I'm well, sorry, Dr. Mosley, you have the floor. Okay. I gave it to you. Are you done speaking? N no, but you're-, no, you're no, Sir, please. I gave you the floor first as a courtesy, asked you to respond to the questions that were sent to the administration that last week. I was very clear in my opening remarks how the meeting was going to proceed. So if you have a comment, please make it. If not, we'll then continue the meeting. Okay, couple things. 
the question that, that you're asking would be more than happy to answer your question. There were some, there were some positions that were proposed around the data specialist being cut. Um, I'm not interested in cutting positions right now. That's not appropriate for the district. Uh, we have a plan for the data plan, uh, uh, the, the data specialist. It was disappointing to hear that that was actually broached at the last meeting. Um, we are actively trying to recruit people to fill those positions, and the fact that that was brought up during uh, a board meeting without my knowledge or anything really um, diminishes potential applicants. Um, I have no intentions on cutting those data specialist positions. We're, we're gonna find the right people to collaborate and work with our faculty. Uh, so the answer to your question is that I have no interest in cutting those positions whatsoever. Um, I think it's a detriment to the, to the district. I think it undermines the work that we are doing. And so I, I have no interest in that. Thank you. Are there any other questions that are unanswered that we have an answer for? The, Mr. Donovan, do you have anything to fill in here? Just um, sort of update the question was the $10,000 that was in the uh, 0153628. That is the survey. That's what that $10,000 okay. is. Good. Um, I'm sorry, what, um, which survey? There Excuse was me. a, this item here. He'll explain it. Okay. Thank you, sorry. I lost it that already. was a survey that was in the budget last year that we didn't do, but we put it back in the budget. It's a survey requested by the board. So, so is that the, uh, the follow-up to the climate survey? Exactly. Is that, well, we have the same yes. mind on that. Yeah, it's a climate survey, exactly. Thank you. Uh, so um, thank you, it was a climate the, survey. Excuse me, I, I'm going to just say that I don't, I, the way that this, you're asking me to make comments on this budget that I made a proposal to. And I'm sharing with you right now that the, the way that we're approaching this is, in, is inconsistent with what I would advocate for or agree with. One of the things that needs to happen with the budget is that if there are positions that need to be reduced or anything like that, if you wanna go down that road, that's fine. But I have no, no idea where the genesis of these questions are coming from, where for instance, there's a question around uh, do we know what clubs are out are out there supported by teachers who do not receive a stipend? We have many clubs out there. So, uh, if, but what? But it, the the question is, if you want to add more money for clubs, you have to say we want to add more money to the chess club. We want to add more money to this club. There's certainly a, uh, this to me is is we're getting off track. We need to make some decisions on the proposal of the budget in terms of it's at 3.4, if you want to reduce that to three, uh, 2.5, then we can have the discussion of taking things out. But I have no idea in terms of where these, these questions are coming from in terms of data, in terms of conversation with, with the administrators or anything like that. So um, to answer these questions with fidelity, I need to know the genesis of where they're coming from. Okay, so let me... So, uh, Ms. Ms. Van Twyver, do you want to, you, you're more experienced in the answer, I think, than oh, I I can't so. understand how you're calling them Ms. Van Twyver, and we've been having our hand up, She's and you're going straight because, to her. I'm sorry. Point of order, you did point. not give her the floor, Mr. Chairman. Okay, point of order then, I will answer Dr. Mosley directly. This is the process that's been used at this district. It's what I've experienced for the last two years is when the board receives the budget, the board now has analysis of the budget, requests information about the budget to make decisions about the budget that it is interested in. The superintendent, the administration, they, you make a recommendation to, for a budget, and then that budget is handed over to the board who proceeds to evaluate and make changes. That is our prerogative to do so. And those questions that were provided to the administration were done exactly for that reason. Now, so please answer the question. So we, what we received was answers to questions 2, 5, 7, 8, 11, and 17. Uh, you have shared that you didn't intend to cut the data specialist. I don't know what number, I see you. And that the, Mr., I, I see you. Okay, keep your hand up. And Mr. Donovan shared with us that the, uh, the climate survey was $10,000. So 
We have remaining questions. I ask that they be answered. If they're unavailable for tonight, that's fine. Please say so, and please have them answered for the next meeting. What, we cannot this, complete our deliberations until the questions are answered. Fine. Can you ask the question again? I have some answers. Oh, I don't have the list of the questions. Oh, okay. Give me a second to... I have, I have the answer to this question. I have the question. Yes. Thank you. Okay, so the first... All right, thank you. These are the questions that were sent to Dr. Mosley by me on the 23rd, the Friday after our last meeting. So the first question had to do with sending dial-in and out numbers to board members for boardroom access and phones. You know, some people who didn't have them, we thought they were going to be remote. All right, but that's really not a budget question. Oh, but the point is, these are the questions. You asked what the questions were. I'm starting number one. Uh, then the placing phone. Oh, so, so your, your answers don't relate. Your question answers don't relate to the things that I asked. I can answer Very number nine if you I'm need sorry. to answer that. Uh, let me... Uh, let me respond to Mr. Donovan. So the next question, all right, I'll, okay, so I'll just jump to those that are specific. So number four in the email said, a clarification is requested on the administration's intent surrounding the CTE program at relate, as it relates to advanced manufacturing. What are your plans for this program? It was suggested that an instructor was being recruited. Is this true? What do you see as necessary startup costs? Mr. Donovan thought the Perkins grant can be used for that. Is that correct? So, Mr. Donovan, in the information you did give us tonight, on the reverse side, question 11, I'm not sure how these numbers came about. What is the cost to turn on the machines in the machining program? Per Marianne Dustin, the cost to operate to the operating budget would be $1,000. The higher cost of approximately $24. Thousand to retrofit the machines with flash port drives would be 20. Well, she said it twice here. Anyway, it looks like $24,000 is the cost to get the machines ready, and that would be covered by the Perkins grant. But the issue here, if I remember Mrs. Odin's question, which is, was Mrs. Odin's question that drove this question, is that right, Mrs. Odin? So is, is your question about the machining program, your curiosity was, do we have money in the budget to pay for that staff because we were looking at moving things around? The teacher. Right, so is your question, I, you know, I just wanna know if your question is answered. Mm -hmm. Okay, good, okay. So that was that question. Uh, then there was, I'm, I'm sorry, hold on a second. Then there was, because I, Selective okay. people. No, I, I said no oh, to okay. Ms. Cohen, see, is right. what I said. So the next question uh, had to do, there was a question of providing stipends to non-athletic clubs. Do we have any? If so, do they have a stipend and at what amount? So that was a question that Ms. Cohen, see, had asked. And, yes, and, and that is in the book, in your, there is a debate coach. Okay. In the, there's a whole list in the contract of the various positions that receive stipends so there are for co-curricular activities. There are debate coaches at the two high schools. They get 1597 each. But I guess I would suggest this is a contract thing. If you're going to add positions, you really should go through the contract. It's not just a budget item. Understood. Thank you. So I, the, the reason why the question was asked, I, we were at, I, I remember being at, um, at graduation and talking to a teacher. And she was talking about the commitment she had to her students, and she had problems with getting a bus, and she actually put it on her. You might remember this situation where she actually paid for it herself. Eventually, I sent her to you, and I understand that you were able to reimburse. So we want to acknowledge all of it. So maybe we need to work with the union then to identify some of these positions so that the, all the coaches not just athletics and the ones we are in the contract, but those that may not be referenced are in there. So the next question, um, so that, that, that was really the next one. Then the board would, oh, the board would like clarification from the administration regarding its commitment to iReady. Does the administration have an objection to dropping grades one and two and repurposing those funds? Yes. Could you please explain? Right now, it's too premature to drop anything. 
because there needs to be a strategic plan that's currently being uh, re, uh, written right now. We're evaluating all assessments that's used district-wide, figuring out exactly what the appropriate assessments are, the timing of assessments, and uh, the appropriateness for grade level. At this time, it's, I would not, the intent is not to make any modifications at, at this time because we still need more data. Okay, thank you. S from something you just said, you said we are writing a strategic plan at this time. Drafting, getting it together. I well, mean, we're The committee we're has not the, met. Okay. You want me to answer your question? Or, or I'll let you talk and then you can let me answer well, the I question. Just, I'm just puzzled how you can start drafting a document for a committee that hasn't met yet. But we'll deal with that at another time. Is there any money, money in the budget for a climate survey? So you've answered that one, thank you. And the HR director, if the HR, assistant HR director position was approved, and this was my question, would the administration commit to meeting public, prior public commitments to review and publish outstanding HR finance and other outdated administrated procedures? I'm sorry, is this a quid pro quo question? If you hire the human resource director, we have to, it's contingent upon meeting with public comment. What, I what think I that's said, totally inappropriate. I, I, I think the, the human resource, the assistant human resource director would be under the leadership in my supervision, the superintendent's supervision. I don't think that's a, I, the word, the way that that's worded, that seems like it, that's pro, pro, pro quo, in other words, if I hire it, then it's all contingent upon a meeting prior public comments review and publish outstanding human resource, finance, and other outstanding administrative uh, procedures. I don't even, outdated, excuse me. Um, there are a variety of things that need to happen in the, the, the human resource. Uh, as we've shared it publicly, we're understaffed there. That needs to be addressed, so they would be uh, working closely under, uh, with uh, Dana O'Gara and the other administrators in the human resource, actually other personnel in the human resource, alongside with Dana and Garth and, and myself. So is that a yes or a no, please? So are you saying that, I, I, I guess what I'll, I'll, I'll just state it clearly. Um, I don't know what you're looking for for this answer. I just share with you my expectations. Okay. So let me answer with pretty close to the language that I used at the last meeting. I was very specific when I put this in here, and I said that my vote on the assistant director was contingent upon my understanding if these things were going to be done or not. So I was very upfront and forward about what I am looking for to fund this position, and I'm just, that's why I asked the way it was, because I'm clear about what I'm looking for. And that obviously is in the, the record for the last meeting. There's board policy that said that uh, school board members do not supervise district employees. That's in the preview of the superintendent. But we do get to approve the hiring of that particular, well, maybe not that particular position, but we do allocate the budget for it. And my decision on do I support that budget allocation or not is contingent upon, under, for me, understanding the role that person's going to play. And that's legitimate to me. So that, those uh, conclude the questions. Thank you very much. I think Ms. Timmons was first. Okay. Um, I would like to make a motion to send the FY19 superintendent budget of $110,329,993, which represent a 3.41 from fiscal year 18 budget increase to the Board of Aldermen for approval. I second the motion. Hold on a second here. Point of order, isn't that out of order based on the chairman's rules at the beginning? We have uh, the chairman cannot make his own rules. It's, we we are from point of order, Robert's Robert's rules of order. We have before us, before this committee, we have the question of the budget. All those questions were done. And we and I made the motion. And it was seconded. So let me excuse me, Mr. Collins. So let me be very clear about what I said. Let Any me give you the com to know the motion. You are out of order, Ms. Timmons. So if you happen to look into Robert's Rules of Order, and I'm definitely addressing your question, one of the things Robert's does, it protects the voice of the minority. It's intended for all voices to be heard in public bodies such as ours. And the reason why I did what I did in the beginning, 
to which there was no objection, which means by acclamation you accepted Point of order, it. you did not give us a chance to object you or sure speak. I Actually, I did. You did. I said if there is no objection, and there was no objection, and that's when I handed the floor over to Dr. Mosley. Shut us and down. Mr. That's what you did. Well, it's actually the exact opposite, Ms. Timmons. You're, you're misinterpreting. I'm doing the exact opposite. I'm ensuring that every member of this, including our newest member, which was a reason why you wanted to cancel the meeting last week, was that Ms. Porter wasn't here and couldn't contribute. So now on her first meeting, you're willing to shut down debate on the budget and I mean, we've had an introduction, but we have no voice from Ms. Porter, and she deserves to have a voice, as everybody in this room deserves to have the voice. And that's why I structured today for that purpose. I was very clear that everybody will be heard. Your motion is in contradiction to that. Well, that, I that's said, point of order. Me, we go by Robert's rules of order. You cannot make your own rules up. Actually, if the chair of a meeting can, and by publicly expressing them and asking for agreement as I had, have done, I've actually done that. So you are out of order. I was very clear. And it's still on the floor. It's, it's out of order. It's not accepted. Ms. Raymond. Out of curiosity, since Mr. Mosier is attending by phone, are we able to accept something without a roll call? Just for my own clarification. Everything has to be by roll call. I said that in the opening so as well. In including the part where you asked if there were any objections or no? Because to me, it would seem that if you're saying we agreed by consensus and we didn't do a roll call to make sure that Mr. Mosier's voice was heard, did we miss, am I misinterpreting that? Okay, thank you, Mrs. Van Twyver. Ms. Van Twyver. Oh, I'm sorry, Ms. Van Twyver. Can I speak? Please. By consensus means that nobody spoke up to, to uh, contradict what, what, was, what was said or to go, work, talk against what was said, okay? Nobody did that while he was speaking, even on the phone. But there is a thing going on here that is trying to block out the minority's vote. And I can say that it started last week, or the week that I wanted to uh, call in, and I, my name wasn't even called in the roll call, and I wasn't allowed to express my vote because I couldn't call in, because you didn't have phones here for me. So that night, Miss Heather uh, Raymond was missing too. If I had called in, some of those votes would have gone and failed because of the way I voted. Now you, I had sent you an email about that, Mr. Garino, and you did not respond to it at all. But that's the way I interpreted that evening. And the fact that this is our budget, it is no longer the administration's budget, it's our budget, and we are the ones to settle up what happens. Now, last week, you wanted to cancel this meeting, but fortunately, we had um, conducted the meeting, and then, all these budget items came out. It gave the administration time to look at them. It gave Ms. our new member, Ms. Porter, to look at them so that they were well prepared. Don't look at me and raise your hand. I can't do a damn thing I'm, for you. I'm, I'm raising my hand. To well, don't look at me then and raise your hand thinking that I'm going to do it. I, so I, there has been, I'm telling you, there has been some opportunity here to block out the uh, minority's vote, or minority's voice. And you know very well that Robert's rules, that's the way they, why it was established in the first place was so that the minority could be heard. That is true. Would you read the introduction to the Robert's rules? I did not consent. Mr. Guarino, I did not please consent do not to interrupt the speaker well, who has the floor. To anything. I told people that if you interrupt, I will rule you out of order. And what I said was there would be I'd a like consequence to, to speak. which would be that you would lose your privilege on speaking to that point. So I'm very clear about trying to keep a civil and appropriate meeting. So is there anyone else? No, I'm ruling you out of order. Oh, well, I'd like to, I'd like to rebut, I'd like to rebut what she said, because just because we have more votes than you, that's the democratic process. You elections, have, 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 elections have consequences. If you don't like it, you don't get to be the tail that wags the dog. 
Okay. Actually, we do. And that's what you're seeing right now. And Roberts, thank you, Ms. Antoia, for your comment. Roberts is, was originally built, structured, and, uh, you know, to pervert, preserve the voice of the minority. Right. Now, you Freud may have the pervert. Excuse me. Excuse me. Oh, what that word? Excuse me. I'm sorry. Mr. Guarino, please do not go out of order again. Mrs. Odin, I mean, I understand it's my meeting and I am, have the responsibility for containing this. This is our meeting. Yes, it is. I am the chair of this meeting. It's my meeting. I'm conducting it. I'm the vice chair. It's the out of order. It's the board's meeting. Okay, so I would like to conduct some business here tonight. And what I said I have what, a point of order. I have a motion on the floor. And it's been ruled, it's been, uh, it's, it, it's been declared out of order. So we are going to do a process that gives everybody in the room the chance to go through the budget, make suggestions, and come up with a solution for the budget. We're not going to have the chance to just jam one. Even you have the majority, you'll get your vote at the end. But we should at least hear, I see you, Ms. Timmons, we should at least hear the voice of the other people who don't have the majority voice. And that's what we're here to protect. Ms. Timmons, please. I'm curious to know why that motion, and I'm, I'm totally confused, because I thought when you made a motion, it get voted on and it get voted on by the body. Now you're telling me because you're the chair, you can overrule that motion. I'm, I didn't see that in Robert's rule where a motion is being overruled simply by the chair. However, it can be voted on, and if the body does not like that motion, they can vote it out. So the, my understanding of Robert's rules is that the chair has the prerogative of establishing an agenda which I do, and establishing how the meeting is going to be conducted, which is exactly what I did. And I gave the body an opportunity, as Ms. Van Twyver pointed out, I gave the body an opportunity to object, which no one did, so which constitutes acceptance, and those are the rules that we are operating on for the balance of these budget meetings. So to answer your question, that's how and why. You. And I, and I recall you saying that you wanted to read your rules over and you didn't want anybody to interrupt you because my hands is up from day one. So let me just reinform you, you didn't acknowledge me, so therefore I couldn't object to anything you said. So you decided to dictate the way you want to handle this meeting and it wasn't in consideration of the whole board, it was in consideration of yourself. Actually, my comments were very clear that I'm here to ensure that everybody on this board has a voice. Your motion does not accomplish that, and that is against the interests of this body, and as chair, um, I've, I've commented that it's out of order. We need to preserve the integrity of this committee, and we need to deliberate. What the final vote is, is a different story. I understand you want to skip the deliberations and just go to your vote. That's easy. To use words that were in an email directed at me, that's just lazy and not doing your homework. Excuse so me, there are people who've are done a to? lot of work here. That's right, that was in an email to me. To who? From whom? Mr. Guarino, it's public. Excuse me. So we are going to continue. This is out of order. Yes, Mr. Mosier. Um, I think that we need a clarification of the rules on a motion. Because as I recall, and I'm not saying that I'm an expert on this, but I recall that once a motion is made and seconded, it must be voted upon. And by doing a roll call, that gives everybody the chance to uh, rather vote it up, vote it down. Yes. And uh, then you can continue on from there. But... Uh, I think what's happening now, we're getting away from the, uh, the, the, the rules and the, uh, the, the situation. Shut it down. And uh, we have to uh, uh, accept the, uh, the, num the, uh, the motion 
And as long as it's been seconded, you cannot uh, turn it off. It must be voted upon, either up or down. I, I'd Mr. Like Mr. Garvini, you've already spoken to this, Ms. Hohensee. If we're not going to follow Robert's rules, then I want that voted on, and then we can they can go ahead and take over the budget. Because in the budget, and I've been to other meetings, where they set the ground rules for the meeting, because you've got members, and this is how we're going to conduct business in order to make it move swiftly, efficiently, and let everybody speak. You have the majority. You can shut us down. We might as well go home and resign. If that's what you're ta telling us, then just tell us that these rules don't apply because that's what he was using because you have the majority and you would like to shut us down. If that's what you want, so be it. But it doesn't look good on you. Call side. the question. Call the question. Okay. On the motion. Which motion? On, on the, motion. the motion to accept the budget. As presented. I, All right. Call the question means we're not actually going to discuss we the have motion. To vote. We have to vote on the call to question. Okay. Um, we're, we're voting? Can we, get, can we get some clarification? Is there no discussion to the motion? Call the vote? Well, no. It, it has precedence. So by calling the motion on Mrs. Timmons' motion, we need to vote on the call to yes, we want to call the question or not. That's what this vote is, is a separate vote. So, and then depending upon the answer, the, the response, uh, we'll get your, your clarification. I think you're gonna answer my question, so I stopped. <laughs> okay, but I promise we will not vote until you have the clarification you need, okay? Because I just want you to know we're not gonna do anything until you understand what's gonna happen. Thank you. Okay, because I, I, this is, it's crazy is what it is. It's unnecessary. So the vote before us now is on the calling of the question, which is, do we want to vote on Ms. Timmons, uh, thank you, motion right now without any further discussion, which is exactly what Ms. Timmons' proposal would accomplish. And, and do we need a two-thirds vote for that? Yes, yes. And, correct. Okay. So there are six votes needed so I, to I'm make that happen. I'm still confused. If there is a no vote on calling the question. Does that mean we then discuss the motion or is there not going to be any discussion either way? You, if I may, and Ms. Van Twyver, please be parliamentarian. No, I'll please defer I, I, to your I expertise. I don't well, know why I've gotten to be, I'm, I've pushed parliamentary law because I enjoy it and I think it's the, it makes a civil discussion, but we don't you seem to use it well. If we call the question, we have to right now say, do you want to vote right now? If that's the case and it passes, then there's no discussion, you vote. If it fails, then we can go back and have a discussion and uh, further then take the vote after the, the discussion period is done. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yep. I'm going to shut down. No, let's just mm -hmm. shut down. <clears throat> okay, so calling the question, do you understand? Yes, thank you. I appreciate so, the explanation. So a yes vote is to vote immediately on Ms. Timmons' a motion to accept the uh, superintendent's budget. A vote no would result in further discussion and deliberation by the board. Of the question, of the motion. No. no. Of, yes. of her motion. Of her motion. I'm sorry, I turned off my microphone. Of her motion. Yes. yes. We would be voting on her motion at that time. At that time. If you vote. No, what I'm saying is if, if for example, I chose to vote no and enough people voted no, then we would have a discussion about her motion. Correct. Okay. It doesn't reset the whole day. I would, I would just like some clarification. Um, Mr. Guarino. Um, so it, I would just like to ask what, what matter is, do we have a motion on the floor right now? Do we have, is Mrs. Is Ms. Timmons motion on the floor right now? Yes, you seconded it. Okay. It's on the floor before the board. That's the question before and, the board. And, and what you did was you called the question, which means we're going to end debate about that. And then afterwards, we'll have a vote on the motion. No. Yes. Yes. Is that, that correct? Is correct. Yeah. Oh, okay. yes. Sorry. So this is a okay. vote on voting on the question. There we go. Okay. I finally now it. we got it. Okay. All right. Uh, on roll call, please repeat the on, motion. This is the call. On this calling the question, Mr. Mosher. Mrs. Oden? No. Mr. Kaufman? 
Yes. Ms. Raymond? Wait, I got confused again. This is... It's too late. All right, no. Do you want to vote now or not? You can pass no, and come back. No, I don't back. want to vote now. No. You, but you have to, but at the end. Just vote. Ms. Timmons? Yes. Ms. Hohensey? Yes. Ms. Van Twyver? Yes. Mr. Garino votes yes. Ms. Porter? Yes. 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 Um, call the question one, two, three, four, five, six, seven to two. So now we get to vote on the motion. Did Ms. Raymond, did you vote? Yes, you yes I voted no. I wanted Thank you. to continue. I, no, I'm the just discussion. keeping my own track and I, I didn't catch it. Here. No discussion. The debate is ended. So we're voting on the motion, and I, I, would you like me to read the motion again, yes. please? Yes. Okay. I would like to make a motion to send the fiscal year 19 superintendent's budget of $110,329,993, which represents a 3.41 from fiscal year 18 budget increase to the Board of Aldermen for approval. On the motion, Mr. Mosher? Yes. Mrs. Oden? I'll, I'll wait. Mr. Kaufman? Yes. Ms. Raymond? Yes. Ms. Timmons? Yes. Ms. Hohensey? No. Ms. Van Twyver? Yes. Mr. Garino votes yes. Ms. Ms. Porter? Yes. Uh, Mrs. O Ms. Oden? Yes. Yes? Yes. The motion carries uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight to one. We can move to adjourn now. Uh, the chair will, is willing to accept a motion to adjourn. To adjourn. Second. Mrs. Hohensey, seconded by Ms. Van Twyver. On the Roll motion. Call, please. On the motion to adjourn, Mr. Mosher? Yes. Mrs. Oden? Yes. Ms. Kaufman? Yes. Ms. Raymond? Yes. Ms. Timmons? Yes. Ms. Hohensey? Yes. Ms. Van Twyver? Yes. Mr. Garino votes yes. Ms. Porter? Yes. Motion carries. The, uh, the, the budget committee is adjourned at 7.19 p.m.